What's up, y'all? Dr. Bayer Pierre here. Welcome to another episode of Medicine Mondays. And you know I like to keep it transparent with the Lunch and Learn community. So I got to tell you about my most recent doctor's visit. Yes, doctors go to doctors to get appointments as well. Like, I got to get my checkup. Because imagine if I'm sitting here behind this camera telling you, hey, go get your annual physical, go get this screening done, and I myself am not doing it. Now, I know doctors can be very hypocritical. You do not have to tell me how hypocritical doctors can be. I try not to be one of them, at least on purpose, right? Like, I try to practice what I preach, so I always have my annual physical typically scheduled around this time frame. Lots of different reasons, right? I like to go into the fourth quarter of the year, you know, feeling fresh, feeling energized, knowing that I've gotten all my checkups done. If I need to do any testing or screening, I have time to kind of schedule it in before the year is out. But typically at the end of the year, you usually hit your deductible and then the insurance has to pay for it all. Now, it'd be worse, right? Now, my birthday's in December. So imagine if my birthday's in December and then I find out I need to do a test or something and then all of a sudden I have to wait till the next year where I don't hit my deductible and then I have to kind of pay for it, right? So financially, it's, it behooves me to give myself some breathing room just in case something pops up that last quarter of the year that I need to do like a random test or something that hopefully the insurance can pay for, right? But again, back to our regularly scheduled program, right? So I go to my annual physical, I get all my blood work done, right? Like, you know, I lost some weight, all of my in the diabetes cluster, all that stuff is good, right? But the one thing that comes back, which is surprising, which not surprising, I should say, is my vitamin D was low. And you may be saying, Dr. Mary Pierre, you stay in the state of Florida where the sun is living right next door to you. How could your vitamin D still be low? And I'll be honest, right? A lot of times, like especially just in my profession, I'm inside of a building. I'm in a building, right? So I'm not getting it the natural way with the sun. And I'm not a big milk drinker, right? I'm not a big milk drinker at all. So dairy products and stuff like that, they don't fancy me. And because of that, I'm not necessarily getting it within the diet as well too. So the doctor told me, hey, you know what? You got, I got to prescribe you some vitamin D. And I've said this before here in the Lunch Learning community. As a healthcare professional, especially as a physician, we don't get a lot of nutrition talk, supplement talk. It, it, they don't really do it, right? Like I can, I can remember. We had about a, I think it was like a two week course right? Two week time frame within my whole medical school year where the focus is on specifically on nutrition, like two to maybe four weeks. I'll give them four weeks. I'll tell, I'll say, Hey, Nova, you spent about four weeks talking about nutrition out of the whole time I was there. Right. But I think it was two weeks. So we don't get a lot of nutrition talk. So a lot of times your primary care providers and just your physicians aren't usually the best people to talk to when it comes to like nutrition and supplements, unless we go a little bit extra, right? Like I've had naturopaths on the show and, you know, we deep in on the kind of nutrition support. A lot of my physicians who are real big into the nutrition and supplement, nutrition, vitamins and supplements is because they have to do extra work to get it, right? So I say, you know what? I need to start making a concerted effort, right? To start learning more about my vitamins, my supplements, and like, what are people looking for? So what do most people do when they say, hey, what are the supplements that are hot? Right. They go to Google. Right. They did their little Google search. Right. Now, I use a different platform that does the same thing. It does my searching, but does a little bit more on the academic front. Right. Because I just wanted to know, hey, what are the top supplements that are people are looking for, people are using that I need to start like kind of going deep dive in, right? And, you know, uh, recently we started working on ramping up our blogs, right? So um, we're going to have a lot of blogs specifically dedicated to these individual vitamins and supplements. But I wanted to kind of like give you guys an idea because you may not know because I, I it, it was a learning experience for me where right? I even went to Amazon and said, hey, Amazon, like who, who's getting all of these supplements and what supplements are they getting? And so first and foremost, obviously one of the top supplements that people are purchasing, searching, looking for, trying to find information in is vitamin D. Lo and behold, I happen to be low on vitamin D and one of the most commonly prescribed, commonly searched out, bought vitamins over the counter is vitamin D. So clearly there is a hunger, you should say, right? There's a hunger for those looking for vitamin D supplements and trying to get their supplementation back, right? Now, of course, there's a lot of positive and benefits. Um, we're gonna have a whole blog dedicated specifically on vitamin D. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. If you are not, make sure you are subscribed uh, to our newsletter. You'll know when we do that vitamin D, but it should come out, uh, you know, probably 
by the time of this recording, it should come out pretty fairly well. Definitely, definitely by like the end of November, Christmas time, we'll, we'll have all of our supplement blog posts ready for you guys to go. You can just go to this website, drbarrypierre.com, search your, you know, whether you're looking for vitamin D or whatever uh, vitamin supplements we talk about, it, you'll find it, right? So vitamin D was one, right? And I got, I got my list over here. So you're going to see me look over here. I guess a lot of people are having trouble sleeping. Melatonin was a very popular very popular supplement that people were looking for. You know, obviously it helps with trouble sleeping. And, you know, I, again, I was shocked too. Like I usually don't have no trouble sleeping. I think I have to thank medicine for that. Right. And thinking, you know, working at nights, like I'm the type of person, I could, I can sleep pretty quickly. So sleep usually isn't an issue for me, but melatonin is an over counter supplement that you can incorporate for your sleep, right? So melatonin was another one that was on top of the list of people were searching for, looking for, you know, supplement, uh, you know, replacement. The next one, oh, MD, right? So this was essentially a cholesterol supplement medication for those who are wanting to fight cholesterol, but wanting to fight it the natural way. Typically, I see this a lot because a lot of times when you prescribing patients like a statin therapy, like there's muscle ache, there's muscle pains. There's some people who just don't do well with that class of medication, even though it is the best class of medications for cholesterol. So they said, doc, I need to find a natural way, right, to fight my cholesterol. And apparently like a lot of people are looking for these cholest MDs, you know, the fish oil type like supplements as well kind of falls in that same long lines to try to decrease the cholesterol either intake or just decrease how much the body is making, right? So Cholest MD. And for those who may be keeping track, you don't have to keep track. I will actually have this link to in my show notes, right? So you'll be able to click the link and you're going to see all of the, you know, supplements that I mentioned today. Collagen. Yes, collagen was one, right? Now I thought, and I'm, I'll be honest, right? I was, I was a little ignorant. I thought collagen was one of these supplements that old people got. Like you gave it like, Hey, this, this must be for like old people broken, like, like creaky bones or something. Like that's why I thought, like, what are people using collagen for? But apparently it does extremely well with the skin. It does a lot of skin health associated with collagen and the, the need for collagen, right? So. Shout out to those who are searching for collagen because you got some issues with your skin, weight loss. Maybe if you lost a lot of weight, you have a lot of stretchy skin, like that seems to help as well too. So, and like I said, we're going to go into a much deeper dive. I don't want to make this all scientific -y or deep dive in the, you know, the pharmacokinetics of it, right? I'm going to have a whole blog post for that. So y'all guys can uh, check that out and read that when that comes around. But collagen is another one uh, that a lot of people tend to be searching for. This was a good one. Probiotics. Now, if you're irregular, and I can tell you, even in the hospital setting, in the rehab setting, we're constantly having to prescribe probiotics. Why? Because one of the things that we typically prescribe in a hospital setting, in a rehab setting, are antibiotics. And we know that when your gut, you know, the gut health and the gut biome has been disturbed because you have been given antibiotics for an infection, pneumonia, whatever the reason you've been given antibiotics for, we know that problems can arise. One of the biggest problems we always talk about is C. diff. C. diff is one of those disease outbreaks that occur. Now, mind you, we all have C. diff in our body. Everyone has C. diff in their body. I want to make sure I stress that before I keep talking. Everyone has C. diff in their body. The problem is, is that typically all of your other biomes kind of keep it in check. So there's usually not the, an issue of, of infighting. But if you get some antibiotics, all of a sudden those other biomes that were kind of keeping the C. diff in check go. And then the C. diff rises. And the problem is if the C. diff rises, one of the issues that you can have is frank and putrid Frank and putrid diarrhea to the point where if you ask any medical professional, especially those who work in a hospital setting, they can tell you that that person has C. diff by the way their stool smells. It smells bad and it will clear a room quickly. It's different. Like you may think your poop smells, but if you have C. diff and you have diarrhea due to C. diff, it's a different type of smell. So probiotics are commonly prescribed to try to kind of maintain that balance in the gut. We do it again. We do it in the hospital. We do it, uh, you know, post-op care. Like it's a very commonly prescribed probiotic. And I was, I should say, I wasn't shocked or surprised that a lot of people were looking for it or trying to get it because I know the amount of people who keep looking and trying to get antibiotics are always on the rise. So. Of course, you know, trying to keep that gut health in check, I think is extremely important, right? So probiotics is another one that a lot of you guys tend to be searching for. This was a good one. 
Magnesium. Magnesium. And again, mind you, magnesium is one of these nutrients that, especially in a hospital setting, we know that if you have issues absorbing your magnesium, your magnesium is super low, it can cause cardiac related issues. Um, it can cause issues associated with you not being able to maintain other electrolytes, in particular potassium. And a lot of times, one of our medical, you know, little caveats, especially from a testing perspective, is that if you have a person who is persistently hypokalemic, aka low potassium in their system, one of the first tests you typically do is you'll check the magnesium because we know if your magnesium is not in order, your body does not retain the potassium. So it's one of those kind of like board study questions where we're like, all right, why is this person's potassium remaining low despite the fact that I'm giving them to them left and right? It is because... It is because your magnesium stores are low, right? So a lot of people are looking for magnesium, typically magnesium oxide. The reason why I have to stress that out is because one of the medications that our GI doctors, gastroenterologists, love to give when they're prepping patients for a colonoscopy is magnesium, right? And why do they give a lot of magnesium? It's because the magnesium, right, can cause, if you get in a good amount, which is a high dose amount, you can get diarrhea. And again, this is a special formulation, typically not sold over the counter, so you don't have to worry about like, oh my God, am I buying the wrong magnesium? Usually the magnesium you can buy is not the magnesium that the GI doctors give to cause frank diarrhea, right? It's usually not the case, right? But magnesium is a very popular supplement that, you know, is used to try to, again, bone bone health, m muscle cramps, muscle pains also kind of fall in line uh, if you have, you know, low magnesium. So definitely something to kind of be a weary of and look out for. Creatine. Creatinine is for the kidneys. Creatine, right, which also works through at the kidneys as well too. Muscle growth, right, for those who, who work out, those who have, you know, some joint issues. Uh, creatine has seen to be extremely beneficial. A lot of you guys are looking for creatine, not creatinine, creatine, um, you know, spelling wise. Um, and then the last one is just vitamin C, right? Like, which I thought uh, vitamin C makes sense, right? Even again, I'm a juice drinker, so I get a lot of my vitamin C, right? Just in the, you know, stuff I'm eating and drinking, right? Vegetables and whatnot. But like, if you're not, right? Let's say you, you don't take your vitamin C in that, that fashion there. Vitamin C is a popular one that people are looking for, right? So those were like the major supplements that I saw. Now there's a whole bunch of others. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm never going to know everything about every supplement. I tell my patients that all the time, like, hey, if you've done your research, give me some time to do some research as well. That way, the supplements and vitamins you take maybe don't counteract with something that I'm giving you. Once we meet here, like, I'm okay with you rocking it, right? Very rarely do I tell my patient, don't take that supplement or don't take that vitamin unless I know it's maybe counteracting with a medication that you're taking. So very rarely am I going to do that. So, but again, I just wanted to, again, we talked about the vitamin D. We talked about melatonin, cholesterol, MD, which is going to cholesterol pill, probiotics, creatine, collagen, vitamin C, and magnesium, right? So, and I will have a link to my, I call it Dr. Pierre's recommended supplements, right? So I'm going to have a link in the show notes to my recommended supplements. And we are working on having blog posts for each individual supplement. For those nerds out there in the Lunch and Learn community who want to know, hey, how does this work? Why does this work? Who should I be using it for? Like, because I didn't want to get all, you know, fine tuned because this would be like an hour long show, right? We did, I didn't want this making an hour long show. I just wanted to give you that overview that, hey, I'm starting to see the light and recognizing that, hey, I need to get on my supplement game, especially because my doctor keeps telling me I'm low on vitamin D. And if I'm low on vitamin D, that means you are probably low on vitamin D or vitamin C or magnesium, or maybe need some creatine, or maybe need some collagen in your life, something. Help me help you. And that's why we're here for the Lunch and Learn community, right? I am yours truly, Dr. Barry Pierre. Remember, check the link to the show notes. It will go to my Amazon store where you can Purchase any of those supplements, especially if you feel like you're short and you're like, you know, I may be deficient on some of these things here. And keep a lookout on the blog post that will be corresponding to each of the supplements that we talked about today. Y'all be blessed. I'll see you guys next week.